My wife, Lisa, and I live on a farm in Taylorville, Nebraska, where we primarily grow soybeans. This took place in September of 2019, during a light drizzle one evening. Lisa and I have spent our whole lives in farming. It's what we know best. Living on a farm in Nebraska means there's plenty of space around us, but not many people. Our closest neighbors, Frank and Tom, each live about half a mile away in opposite directions. They're also farmers. It's easy to become close with your neighbors when you live in such a remote place. We often have Frank, Tom, and their families over for dinner or drinks, and they do the same for us. One otherwise ordinary weekend, we had Frank and his wife over for drinks and board games. We all had a bit too much to drink, and they headed home around 11 p.m. Thankfully, it's a quick, straight drive for them. After they left, Lisa and I continued to sip some wine and watch one of our favorite movies, already starting to feel drowsy from the alcohol. We were on the verge of falling asleep, curled up on the couch, when we heard a knock at the front door. That alone was odd. It was late, and nobody ever came by unannounced at that hour. We thought we also heard someone say something outside. I turned down the volume of the TV and we both listened closely. About 20 seconds later, there were more knocks, followed by a muffled voice saying they needed help. I started to get up, ready to open the door, but Lisa grabbed my arm and gave me a look, shaking her head. I whispered that I was just going to ask who it was, but she warned me not to make any noise, though whoever it was probably already knew we were home. I walked up to the door and asked, Who is it? A voice from the other side responded, Oh, thank God. Can you open up? We're lost. I asked, Who's we? The voice replied, My wife and I. I then asked, Can your wife say something? There was silence for a few moments. I asked again, Did you hear me? The voice replied, Yeah, but she's not with me right now. That's when alarm bells went off in my head. Something didn't feel right, and the voice sounded just a little off like someone trying to disguise it. Trying to lighten the mood, I laughed and asked, Frank, is that you? Frank's a bit of a jokester, and it wouldn't be the first time he pulled a prank after a few drinks. The voice responded, Yeah, but in a slightly deeper tone. I almost felt relieved, thinking maybe it really was Frank, but something still didn't sit right with me. It's not common for anyone to show up at your door in the middle of nowhere, claiming to be lost. That alone is enough to make you suspicious. I decided to ask, what's your wife's name? The unfamiliar voice replied, that's a trick question. My smile faded immediately. I grabbed my phone and called Frank while Lisa kept urging me to call the police. I told her to hold on. The phone rang a few times before Frank picked up. I immediately asked, are you at my front door? He sounded confused and said, no, why? I quickly explained that someone was at our door, pretending to be him. Frank said he'd come over right away and hung up. Keep in mind, we were still a bit tipsy from all the drinking. More knocking came from the door. I shouted, I've got a shotgun. And if you don't leave now, you're going to regret it. The voice on the other side responded, We just need to use your phone. That's all. Lisa called 911 at that point, but we both knew it could take a long time for the police to get here. We then heard footsteps on the wooden deck that wraps around our house. It sounded like there was more than one person. The footsteps stopped near one of our windows, and we heard someone trying to lift it open. This made Lisa scream, Leave us alone! She was still on the phone with 911. I followed her lead, yelling as loud as I could, Get the hell out of here or I'll shoot! That's when I remembered my shotgun upstairs. I ran to grab it from the closet. Just moments later, we heard pounding on the door again. This time, it was unmistakably Frank's voice, shouting for us to open up. I let him in and he had brought his shotgun too. He said he didn't see anyone when he pulled up, but he stayed with us until the police arrived. When the officer got there, he did a quick sweep of the property but didn't find anything or anyone. 
He suggested we install some cameras, which, surprisingly, we hadn't thought of before. To this day, it sends chills down my spine, knowing the only thing keeping those people out that night was a thin wooden door. This story took place at my aunt and uncle's ranch in the summer of 2019. I was there alone for a few nights since they were out of town. They paid me to look after the property while they were away. On the last night, I was watching TV in the living room when I heard an odd sound coming from the field outside. At first, I ignored it, thinking it was probably just a deer or something. But then all the cows started mooing at once. Normally, you'd hear a cow or two here and there, but when all of them start, something's definitely wrong. Being the only one there, I figured it was my responsibility to check things out. So, I went to the closet, grabbed a jacket, and was about to head outside when I heard a loud, high-pitched moo that sounded like a scream. I froze in place, feeling a wave of fear. Something was definitely wrong with the animals. I ran upstairs to my uncle's room, where he always kept a few guns under the bed. I grabbed his rifle, loaded it, and stepped outside. The cows were still making noise, so I headed toward the barn to see what was going on. Everything seemed normal in the barn, but as I walked farther inside, I realized one cow was missing from its stall. That didn't make sense. I was sure it had been tied up when I last checked. Then I heard that high-pitched moo again, coming from the cornfield outside. I started walking toward the sound, but paused when I heard what sounded like voices coming from the field. At that point, I had had enough. I fired two warning shots into the air. Immediately, everything went silent. The cows quieted, and the voices stopped. But then I heard footsteps in the cornfield. I wasn't sure if I had the courage to walk in, but I knew I had to. This is exactly why farmers have guns, and I couldn't just stay in the house with strangers outside. I moved into the corn and soon heard multiple sets of footsteps moving alongside me. My heart was racing as I walked deeper into the field. Then I stopped. About ten feet away from me, down one of the rows, was a person dressed all in black. I raised my gun and told them to get off the property. I wasn't joking, I was ready to shoot, but the person didn't move. I fired another round into the air, hoping to scare them off, but they stayed completely still. Then, they started walking toward me with their arms slightly raised, as if they wanted me to lower the gun. I pointed it at them again, shouting for them to leave. That's when I noticed I was surrounded. There were at least six or seven more people, all dressed in dark clothes. They were wearing these creepy masks, and as the one person got closer, I realized all of them had the same mask on. The person stopped as I took a few steps back. There was a moment of complete silence. I can't even begin to describe the fear I felt, thinking this was it. Then they started chanting something in a language I didn't understand. It sounded like a strange song, and I started to panic, wondering if they were about to perform some twisted ritual. I used the moment to run, sprinting down a few rows of corn. When I was out of breath, I turned and fired six rounds in their direction. I heard footsteps and rustling as they scattered, heading away from me. I had finally scared them off. I ran back toward the house but stopped when I saw something on the ground. It's an image that has stuck with me ever since. In the middle of a circle of candles was the severed head of one of our cows. I felt sick and rushed back inside where I threw up and then grabbed the phone to call the police. I told the dispatcher everything I could. She said an officer would be on their way, but out here it takes a while for anyone to arrive. I also called my parents, asking them to come pick me up. My dad said he'd be there in an hour. I sat upstairs in my uncle's room, shaking and crying until I finally saw a police car pull up outside. I ran out to the officer feeling more relieved than I ever had in my life. After explaining everything, he searched the barn and part of the cornfield and found the cow's head. He immediately called for backup since it was now a crime scene. When my parents arrived, we all sat down with the officer to discuss what had happened. 
My aunt and uncle took it very seriously and installed security cameras all over the property. To this day, I have no idea what kind of group they were or what they were planning, but it was clearly some sort of ritual. I just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. My name is Howard. I'm 25 years old and I live on my family's farm. I help take care of it when my parents are out of town. It's just a little family farm, not a commercial farm or anything like that. My parents want me to take it over when they're too old to take care of it anymore as I'm the oldest of three and the only son but honestly I don't really want to. I don't see myself staying in the middle of Arkansas my whole life and especially not after something really weird that happened only last July. My parents were on a romantic trip for a week and so it was my two sisters Crystal and Morgan and I taking care of the property while they were gone. There's not much around here, lots of privacy, and such a little too much in my opinion except for this one night. It started later on in the night as it was approaching time to go to bed. My sisters do college online. Crystal takes summer courses and so she was in her room on her laptop doing work. Morgan and I were just hanging out watching some dumb show in the living room. All three of us kind of want to get out of the farm lifestyle. Me especially since I'm oldest and in the prime of my twenties. One dreaded part of farm life is the predators though. Not just the animals that come and eat your produce but the people that come and steal from you. Believe it or not it happens. It hasn't happened many times to us but it does happen. We have a few guns in the house for this exact reason. Our two dogs outside suddenly started going crazy in the backyard. Something spooked them for sure. I first thing went outside to the yard to see what they were barking at. They both were looking in the direction of the crops going crazy. I yelled at them to shut up and they went quiet. I stepped right in front of the crops and listened. I heard a whistling from inside of the cornfield. It was undoubtedly a human's whistling. This was the first time I was experiencing a trespasser on the property with my dad not here. I had to hurry inside to get one of the guns. The dogs started barking again. I told my sisters that someone's outside in the cornfield and I had to go chase them away. They both said that was a terrible idea to go run into the cornfield in the dark. And they knocked some sense into me when I realized they were right. I also realized how downright terrifying that would be. So instead, I went out back to the dogs once more going crazy barking in the direction of the crops. I aimed the gun into the air and fired off a shot which echoed into the night, silencing the dogs. I also was on some kind of power trip in the moment and screamed out to get off our land as loud as I could. I felt that would have done the trick and went back inside. My sisters were both laughing which caused me to laugh too. But our little laugh amongst each other didn't last long because the dogs started going crazy again even crazier this time. I went back outside ready to do the same thing again but I felt my heart skip a beat when I saw the guy standing about 20 feet from the dogs right in front of the cornfield. He looked at me and I screamed hey at which point he ran into the cornfield. I started running over and fired another shot into the air. I stopped by the dogs. There was no chance in hell I was going there. I wasn't about to leave the dogs out here either. I unclamped their chains from the hooks and brought them inside the house. I told my sister someone was sneaking around in the cornfield. So what did we do? We called our dad. He told me I had to be the man of the house and protect my sisters. He recommended I fire another warning shot outside if whoever it was came back. After this, we all just gradually went to our respective rooms. My sisters each brought one of the dogs in their rooms and I brought the gun in my room just because we were all a little spooked by this. I had the window open and as I was laying in bed watching a movie on my laptop, I heard a whistling from outside. I hurried to the window and looked out to see someone slowly walking in the grass. Then, like he had some sixth sense, he stopped walking and turned to look at my window, still whistling. This jerk was obviously trying to mess with us and scare us. A very stupid idea when I already made it clear I had a gun. I ran to grab the gun off the bed and aimed it out the window. I shot at the grass a few feet away from him, purposely missing of course. This cut his little horror movie act short and he ran out of view of my window towards the front of the house. This time he didn't come back. 
He'd have to be a fool to come back after that. I obviously told my sisters why I shot and I assured them he would not be coming back. We never found out who it was or why. It could have been some teen or multiple teens just trying to scare some innocent farmers for fun. Or it could have been an actually dangerous person, 